Another Rebuttal by Dan Mason The argument that any claim about intelligent design, ID, is invalid unless we first prove the existence of God presupposes a one-sided application of the burden of proof. In rational discussion, both sides bear the responsibility of supporting their claims with evidence. This standard applies equally to proponents of evolution, particularly when addressing fundamental questions about the origin of life and the complexity of biological systems. Here's how. Evolution's Unproven Assumptions Those who advocate for evolutionary theory also make positive claims, specifically that all life evolved through random mutations and natural selection without the need for a designer. According to the same principle of burden of proof, evolutionists must provide conclusive evidence that random mutations alone can account for the vast complexity, information content, and functionality observed in biological systems. Yet, the origin of life itself remains unexplained. Evolutionary processes only take over after life begins, but how did life arise from non-living matter? Without clear definitive evidence for abiogenesis, life arising from non-life, the claim that life emerged through purely natural processes is equally baseless by the critic's own standard. This leaves a significant gap in the evolutionary explanation. The theory of evolution, then, does not escape the burden of proof. Evolution must provide more than just observations of gradual changes over time. It must explain the fundamental origins and mechanisms that allow for such processes to even begin. The lack of evidence in this area should invite scrutiny just as much as any claim of ID. Complexity in Biological Systems Evolutionary theory claims that the complexity of life, from molecular machines like the bacterial flagellum to the fine-tuned genetic code, is the result of random mutation and natural selection over millions of years. But randomness and gradual selection have not been shown to produce systems of irreducible complexity structures that require multiple parts to function and would be useless if any part were missing. The burden of proof lies on proponents of evolution to demonstrate, step by step, how such systems can arise naturally without a guiding force. Many critics of evolution point to gaps in the fossil record or biochemical hurdles in demonstrating the full pathway from simple molecules to complex organisms. If the complexity observed in life cannot be adequately explained by natural processes, then the argument that complexity implies design remains on the table. Those who dismiss intelligent design outright must provide a detailed alternative, one that accounts for all observed complexities, not just the simpler cases. The burden of proof applies to both sides. The argument that intelligent design is baseless without proving God's existence misunderstands the principle of burden of proof. The claim that life, morality, or complex systems can be explained by natural processes like evolution also requires substantial evidence. If you claim that the origin of life is purely the result of natural forces without divine intervention, then it is your responsibility to provide solid evidence for how life began. Otherwise, the claim can be dismissed as speculative or incomplete. Moreover, many proponents of ID argue that evidence for design lies within the complexity and fine-tuning of the universe itself. The observation of specified complexity in DNA, the physical constants of the universe, and the information-rich nature of biological systems are all presented as evidence that a designer is the most plausible explanation. To dismiss this outright, one must first provide an equally or more compelling naturalistic explanation that accounts for all the same observations. Morality and the Origin of Life Finally, when it comes to morality or the origin of life, the same rules apply. If someone claims that morality does not come from God but is a product of evolution or social constructs, the burden of proof still rests on them to demonstrate how evolutionary processes generate moral frameworks that transcend mere survival instincts. If morality is more than just evolutionary survival mechanisms, the evolutionary explanation becomes insufficient. The existence of objective moral values, human consciousness, and altruism still pose challenges to naturalistic explanations. Likewise, if the origin of life is claimed to be purely the result of natural forces, evolutionary proponents must provide concrete evidence for how life first emerged from inanimate matter. Without satisfying this burden, the claim remains speculative, and alternative explanations, 
such as the possibility of design, remain viable. Conclusion. The burden of proof is not a one-way street. If critics argue that intelligent design is baseless without first proving the existence of God, then the same standard must be applied to evolutionary theory. Evolutionists must demonstrate how random processes can account for the origin of life, biological complexity, and morality. Without such evidence, the naturalistic worldview becomes just as speculative as the claim of design. Therefore, simply dismissing intelligent design without addressing the gaps in evolutionary explanations does not resolve the issue. It only shifts the problem.